Okay, so it, it varies um, between 60 and 70%. It's gonna depend on the species. I mean, desert species might have less water in there. Um, it could probably even be higher for some wetland species as well. And so my question, next question to you guys is, are you looking at a forest? Or are you looking at an actively managed biological lake? So basically a lake standing on its head. So imagine the tonnage in that forest, how much all those trees weigh, and if 60 to 80% of those trees are water, is it actually a bunch of trees or is it actually a lake? That's what I want you to contemplate. <laughs> Yvonne says, if you water them with whiskey, they come up half cut. <laughs> I'm gonna use that one. Awesome joke. Um, anyways, so trees are water harvesting elements. We don't think of them that way, but the ultimate goal with permaculture is not to go and put water harvesting elements everywhere. The ultimate goal of permaculture is to get functional ecosystems back onto the ground, which we have removed over the years, over the last 12,000 years, um, because these ecosystems store biological water. They are managing the climate. They're managing soil fertility. They're managing the water cycle. They're managing the oxygen and the CO2 cycle. Um, we can't live on this planet without these ecosystems. So the water harvesting elements that we're going to talk about are basically ways of fast tracking forest ecosystems. Now, when I use the word forest ecosystem, I don't, I don't want you to think that I'm actually completely biased towards forests. I don't differentiate forests from native prairies. Okay, the architecture or the, I should say the pattern between a native prairie and a fully functional forest like this one is the same. The pattern is the same the scale is different okay and so native prairies were grasslands and they have emerged as grasslands because there wasn't enough water to get forest ecosystems to function and grasslands are some of the most effective carbon sequestration mechanisms we have on the planet which is why where i'm from we have topsoils as deep as 20 feet or at least we did 100 and 150 years ago before we started plowing them and growing annual crops um, and so grasses can be really effective ecosystems as well so we want to always go back to what nature wants to be. We always have to ask that question, what does nature want to be? And then why is she not able to get back to that place? And then we try and understand what the limiting factors are, what the resource constraints are within that ecosystem. And nine times out of 10, unless you live in a really wet climate, the resource constraint is going to be water. Um, so that's why we always talk about water access and structures and we fix the water cycle or at least create some opportunities, some bumps or speed bumps to slow water down. Then we can kickstart ecosystems and once the ecosystem gets kickstarted, like a forest like this is going to have low evaporation. And as that evaporation reduces, it creates more opportunities for life, it creates more snow harvesting, it creates no, more rain harvesting, it creates more habitat. The whole system starts to spiral up. A lot of what we do in conventional agriculture does the exact opposite and it spirals down. 